shalom and blessings. This is the day that Yahweh has made. It continues to be that day and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to this broadcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, while you do so, please let me know whether you can see clearly and hear clearly in our usual check before we proceed with uh, the teaching today. I would like to ensure that you can see and hear clearly before we proceed. I bid you all shalom if you are saints in the kingdom of Yahweh because shalom speaks that you are having that peace that goes beyond understanding. Thank you so much for the feedback. Shalom means that there is absolutely, uh, there is a deep conviction within you that there is absolutely everything right with you. It gives you that assurance that it is always well. I remind you saints that it is always well with the saints. So I bid you all shalom again with the reminder that it is always well. We have no reason or no cause for alarm and to behave as though our world ends regardless of what happens around us. It is a blessing to know that you've been chosen by Yahweh and you've been chosen for salvation. Scripture records that the saints who believe in Yeshua, not Jesus, the saints who believe in Yeshua, Hamashiach, were chosen to obey the truth. We do not choose to obey the truth. We were chosen by Yahweh to obey the truth. We have been set apart. That is what holy means. We have been consecrated. That is what holy means. We have been chosen. That is what holy means. So that we can obey the truth, being Yeshua the Messiah. And so that we are able to be the bride, which is the, the, that part of the covenant where Yahweh has given to his son a bride. What a blessing. What a blessing. If you have that assurance, then it is highly likely that you would not be so concerned about who likes you or who does not like you, about who uh, thinks you're nice. We speak about that today and who thinks that you are evil or mean. It really doesn't matter because as long as you've chosen to obey the truth, then all that matters to you would be the truth. Also, or additionally, since we have a clear stream, please let me know whether you're, or please be, if you don't mind, willing to share this broadcast with someone you know is normally here with us, but they do not receive notifications. I think it's a Facebook algorithm. But I do know that Facebook has begun, or has been a while, they're monitoring my comments uh, and my um, posts very, very, very closely. Facebook has even gone as far as to develop an algorithm for a word that doesn't exist, Bogomite. And when I present that word, the computer automatically seeks to flag my page. Imagine that. But I bid you all shalom. We, in the, the letter uh, to Yehuda, or from Yehuda, to all of those who've been called, we, sp we began this last week, where we spoke to contending without reservation. Yehuda is one book, one letter, sorry, it's one epistle, just before the book of Revelation. And Yehuda, his name is not Jude. Yehuda wrote to these saints, because he saw the need, and you'll see how urgent it was for him to address certain matters, which I would today as well. So he said, to those who've been called, who are live, loved by Yahweh the Father, we spoke to this last week, and kept for the Messiah. They're not keeping themselves. They are kept for the Messiah. May mercy, love, and shalom be yours in full measure. Only to those who are kept by Yahweh for Yeshua, the Messiah. Dear friends, he wrote, I was busily at work 
writing to you about the salvation we share. I say to you again, this book is somewhat common or just a line or two from this book is common. But the, the nature of the book is extremely important to a saint of this letter. He said that he was busy at work writing about the salvation we share. We who? There is a common salvation that flows through those who believe in Yeshua the Messiah. And there's a common salvation for those who believe in Jesus. It's not the same. They're not the same. Obviously by now you can recognize it's not the same. To those of us who believe in Yeshua the Messiah, believe indeed, not believe that his name is Yeshua in full stop. We believe in Yeshua the Messiah. We believe wholeheartedly that Yeshua the Messiah is the only anointed one. And he doesn't have a clone called Jesus. Now because we believe that, the way we function is different. And that is why we are marked for persecution, because we are different. I'm so happy that some of you are being able to be identified now as Yeshua people, and uh, yeah, you're one of those who follow Yeshua. And don't, l let me just help you here, please. There's those in your family and your circles and so on who may want to say to you that, uh, ask you if you're Hebrew, because you say Yeshua. Listen to me, never say no. Never respond by saying no, I'm not. I'm going to caution you, to those of you who people seek, even disparaging to say, oh, you think you're Hebrew? No, do not tell them you think. Tell them you know that you are, because Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29 speaks to this. It speaks to the fact that a Hebrew, or a Yehudim it's called, the Yehudim are not known by their, in reference to spiritual matters, by their external appearance, but by the inward circumcision of your heart. Good to see you, Gary. You are not by some outward appearance known as a Hebrew person. You are a Hebrew because your, your heart is right. That's what Romans chapter 2, verse 20 and 29 speak to. So don't tell people, no, you're not. Yes, you are. Even if you are not biologically Hebrew, the fact that you are salvaged from wickedness, you've been grafted into the natural olive tree. That's what Romans speak to as well. It also says that you who were once not a part have now become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. I say to you again, it doesn't matter how you look on the outside. You are a Hebrew if your heart is right. There's an inward circumcision that occurs that make you who you are. So are we Hebrews? Yes. Because that's the chosen race. That's the chosen generation. Oh, let me help you with this before we proceed. Kiefer, when he wrote the letter, he never told the whole church you were chosen generation. Stop that foolishness. He, he wrote to those in the diaspora. Read the book carefully. Because you like to quote this in, in your Sunday school and Sabbath school class. For we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Every nation cannot be peculiar. He never said there were chosen nations. There was one nation he's addressing. And in the letter, the greeting had began by saying to those in the diaspora, which would be all of the Hebrew people scattered across the world. That's who he wrote to, who were salvaged. Gentiles are not a chosen generation. Now swallow that for a second. Yeah, we never chose Gentiles. In reference to all nations to be chosen. He even told uh, Moshe to tell the people of Israel, I will pick out from among Gentiles some who will have bear my name. He never said everybody. So picking out means he's going to make those who picked out, handpicked, chosen, set apart, consecrated, he's going to make them a part of Israel. Hence, in Ephesians, show wrote that we, the, 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 Galatian, the, the Ephesian people who were Gentiles, some of them, some of them were chosen in Messiah before the foundation of the world to be blameless and to be holy, which is different. And he said, you who were once not a people, the few of you have now become a people. Let me help you with this. Every nation who is not chosen is not a people of Yahweh. You're not. 
you simply fire for the furnace or you simply coals I should say or fuel to be destroyed I give Yahweh praise for choosing those of us before the world was formed to be called Hebrew we are a chosen nation and we share that common salvation the Jesus crew choose to make Jesus their Lord Yeshua's people have been chosen by Yahweh to bear the nature of the Lord Yeshua just know the difference please note the difference Jesus people choose to make Jesus Lord because he hasn't no power to do anything just like a Hindu can make Krishna Lord they have to make him their God a Muslim has to make Muhammad or Allah rule them Shalom Apostle Lambert we don't choose to we don't, we don't have that kind of power we have been chosen by Yahweh that is our faith that is our conviction you don't choose you never choose to make anybody authority There is a common salvation, I say again, that we share as believers in Yeshua. And I'm so grateful to Yahweh that he has chosen to allow us to be alive, to see much of what Kepha, Shoal, and others wrote about. I'm so happy that we've been chosen to see that the Jesus Tower is collapsing as a, at a very rapid rate. You are being battered and beaten from every corner. The foolishness and the folly attached to that name is being exposed to a degree that you've never seen before. I touched on it briefly and I will do the, the other broadcast because I had many interruptions uh, as to why I couldn't proceed. But this is 2021, they said. Of course, as, as Hebrew people, we're in the year 5781, but they said it in 2021. And 2020 was bad. If Jesus ever took blows in his life, he took it 2020. And you people believe that it was supposed to be a year we have 2020 vision, which is not perfect vision, by the way. What you said was perfect vision. And you're going to have all these major things happening for you. And nothing happened but COVID-19. Battered you. Then TB Joshua said in March, it will end by the 27th. In Jesus' name. He went on a fast and said he's not going to eat until COVID ends. Well, I, think, I didn't see his funeral yet. Which means he got down from the mountain and started eating. Then you said it will end in April. In Jesus' name. Didn't end. One said it will end in June. In Jesus' name. Then then another said it will end in September. In Jesus' name. And you are now in January and it got worse. In Jesus' name. <laughs> COVID battered you all. Then in the midst of COVID, in Guyana, there was the election. And the prophet saw that David Arthur Granger, who they said is a man of God, who supports sodomites and buggery. That's a man of God who supports what Yahweh destroyed Saddam and Amara for. That's called a man of God by them. And they were supposed to see this man returning into power, returning to office as president. What happened to him? Of course you know the deal. The PPP, the PPP said the whole world saw. So he's now out. Well, he had a second chance. Because Ghana is a small country, so maybe Jesus didn't want to work for Ghana and for Granger because it's too small. So you now had a major international scale now uh, in reference to the USA. Now the whole world knows the USA. The whole world knows Donald Trump. So the whole world had a chance to see that the prophet said that Jesus will make Donald Trump uh, president. And that little imbecile Brian Karn, that criminal said he saw, he prophesied that Donald Trump would win, but he had a dream that, that Biden would also win. He's a, he's a smart prophet for all y'all. He said he prophesied that Trump will win. But in a dream he saw Biden winning. So I don't know which one was going to work. 
But Paula White went out on a limb, along with Kenneth Copeland and those, and she knew that Donald Trump, according to her, was going to return to office in Jesus' name. What happened to Trump? Because you had a chance to redeem yourself from Granger. Somebody say, believe Jesus got COVID. I think so too. So what happened to Trump? Because Granger is said, Guyana may, be, may have been too small, so you had to have a bigger country for Jesus to redeem himself on a larger scale. But in reference to Donald Trump, it was worse than Granger. Why did that happen? Because Yahweh is showing you the bats and he's showing us his people that there's a distinct this very distinct mark between Jesus and Yeshua if you cannot see that then you're a Jesus bat that's why I call you a Jesus bat even your Christmas took a beating because of COVID Some of you, your daily, wonderful, sweet, cheerful Jesus creatures have begun to perish right in your faces. And the crazy thing is that you're asking me to be sensitive to your destruction. Imagine you've got the nerve to ask me to be sensitive to your suffering. Because when you begin to perish, I must grieve. Have I not told you repeatedly, unceasingly, which I'll repeat today for some of you to hear me in Linden, I do not grieve for wicked people. Never will. I don't care who you are. If you do not believe in the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, you are wicked. You may be well behaved, but wicked. You may have a clean moral record, but you're still wicked. If you believe, thank you, Marvi. If you believe in Jesus, you are absolutely wicked. Because you're telling Yahweh that his salvation is not enough for you. So you could choose another name to save you. And you say, I'm arrogant. Some of you don't understand what arrogance says. Arrogance is when you could look at sovereignty and say, listen, you said that your son must be called Yeshua. You said that there's only one name under heaven whereby men can be saved, but I say that Jesus could save me. Which one of us is more arrogant? You look at how I speak, not what you say and your preachers say. Then you tell people, do not listen to Nigel London because he's saying that Yeshua is the only name that saves you. And when you die, I must grieve for you all. Good, good riddance. You should have dead long now. And more of you will die because you're wicked. I told you last week, you will not have a chance to repent. You all better hear me. This is no joke time here. You will not, most of you in the Jesus Church, I told you this only last Sunday, you will not have an opportunity to repent because you're not chosen to repent. You were chosen and you were set aside for destruction. And I must be sensitive when you, when you die, you must be crazy or what? So let me ask you hypocrites this. When I die, what would you all do? You would throw a party. Can you imagine what you, Jesus Church, would do when, when Nigel London dies? You are going to hold a crusade, a special event, to say that the Lord has delivered us from this man. At last, our prayers work. But if you ask me, you all are about 15 to 1 by now. Say so 15, you die. When I tell you, you all will die. And then I die. Man, the ratio is embarrassing. Because 15 of you who say you are the true dead, and only one die, 15 to 1 is always better. For me, on my part. I don't grieve for you, wicked people. Don't tell me that I'm supposed to be so sensitive to you. Die, because you're evil. If you do not repent, you will likewise perish. There is a different salvation. There's a distinct salvation. There's a salvation where those of us know that we abide by the truth alone. And then there's your salvation where you could invent your truth to follow.
I don't grieve for y'all. And we could have shared all the friendship you think about. But once you decide it, or you prove to me that you prefer to follow error than the truth, then you're only, you're only determined end is destruction unless you repent my job is to preach righteousness to you now should you turn from wickedness we friends again we'll be okay I could deal with you on any given day I'll protect you from anything that people want to do to you as, far, as much as I can I'll speak highly of you so that nobody can, can think that you're on your own but if you want to walk on, on a contrary path or you've been chosen to go there I cannot help you Good riddance. The same people who were discouraging persons from listening to me, I must grieve for when they die. So I must be, I must be sorry that Yahweh removed somebody who's seeking to interfere with the gospel. Are you people out of your mind? Will you grieve for me when I die, you Jesus bats? Will you grieve? Would you say that you're so sorry that Nigel has passed? Now I know some of you ladies will grieve because you wanted me all along. But that's a different story. But barring those of you who always wanted me, that's an emotional grief. I'm talking to spiritual grief here. Would you grieve for me when I die because a good preacher is gone? No! You'll celebrate that Jesus gave you victory, but you're asking me to grieve for you? I know some of you demons so well. If my wife should pass away tomorrow, some of you who like said that you, but not Jesus, will suddenly start saying Yeshua. You women, you. I know you're good from the Jesus church. You suddenly believe in Yeshua with all your heart and come to me, but you converted. Brother, I saw the Lord tell me I must change. Come to, come to me, that foolishness. Come. You must show up. You're an evil. I'll find nothing else to describe you by but evil. <laughs> Where's Regina? I miss my baby so much. Listen. He said I was writing when I, to you about the salvation we share. When I found it necessary. This is not a writer saying here that he is writing because he just wants to do it. He found it necessary to write urging you to keep contending for the faith. Earnestly doing so too. To keep contending earnestly for the faith that was delivered to you. Saints, you are not called to be afraid of speaking boldly about your faith. Especially around those. I'm speaking to those in London, those in Ghana, those in, in, in the diaspora at large. You see when people like to come attack what you believe? Do not play with them. Do not play with them. And I'm making a call to you saints who have space in your homes. Begin to consider that your brothers and your sisters may want a place to live at some point. Believe me. Dr. Yates, you're here. Because some of them will be kicked out of their houses. Now, if you have space in yours and anybody kicked out of their home, do not, receive to, do not refuse to entertain them as a saint. Because Yahweh will test you. You must be bold to speak about what you believe in. Because they're those who are assigned to attack your faith. With a contrary doctrine. And it will cost some of you some comfort. If you know that you're lazy or you don't like taking a bath and you get put out, don't ask to live with anybody. Because as a saint, you must, be, you must be industrious and willing to work and help. Even if you don't have a job, be beneficial wherever you are. If you have bad manners and you're rude, that is not the nature of a saint. So nobody should take you in anywhere. I'm preparing some of you for what lies ahead. This, there, is a, there is an intensification, I told you before. There will be an intensifying of the persecution against the righteous. Because Yahweh, whenever you see Yahweh is causing 
a false god like Jesus to be exposed like this and put to shame, I promise you that those who believe in that person, that false god, will attack you viciously. See, my nephew said his doors are always open. Thank you, Jaleel. Bless you, son. You must earnestly contend. Now, how do they say that you must always be this peaceful, soft, easygoing person if the scripture commands you to contend? You have an issue, some of you. Why is Nigel always having a problem with people? The scripture instructs that we contend for the faith. Not conform to their foolishness. You must contend for what you believe in. You were never called to be somebody who is rolled over and steamrolled in reference to what you believe and you just don't say anything. Because after all, you don't want to appear to be somebody who's argumentative. You don't have to be argumentative to contend. You have to be bold to contend. Sean, it's so good to see you, sis. You must be bold to contend. Good to see you, uh, Brother Albert. Alert. Let's proceed. For certain individuals, verse 4, I'm just brushing over last week. Pastor Rob, good to see you. Certain individuals, the ones written about long ago, listen to this. The ones written about long ago. So before they were born, there was somebody who wrote about them. Also, as being meant for this condemnation. Hey, there are people, and this is worth repeating, there are people who before they were born were meant to be condemned. Now, I'd like to call all of you, all of you Bible school and seminary scholars who would like to preach to people that they've been predestined, and that's Calvary Temple and Assemblies of God Doctrine. You were predestined for salvation, but you choose to make Jesus Savior. You've been chosen to be saved, but you choose whether you want to be saved. And that is your doctrine that seeks to make sense to you. you were ch your doctrine is, because you don't want to doubt the Bible, so you say, listen, Romans 8 says that, whom he foreknew the same he predestined. So we've been predestined for salvation. But you have to choose to make Jesus Lord before you get saved. This scripture says that before you were born, it was written about you that you were chosen to be condemned. Where is your choice of salvation then? Shalom, Brother Kurt. How do you choose to be saved? The Adventists will stand and ask you, who believes in the Bible? We believe in the Bible. Who wants to live by the Bible? Me! Come let me dip in the river. And they call that salvation. Saints, the scripture records here, because I believe the whole truth, the whole truth, not a part of it, that before some were born, it says a long time ago it was written about them, that they were they were meant for this destruction. They were condemned before they were even put out in a hospital delivery room. Can you imagine how many mothers are holding babies in their hands who are destined for destruction? You may be able to raise them by high moral standards and they become pastors because I know some of y'all you don't misbehave as you say society would determine it to be uh, you do not drink you like to boast you do not smoke you don't sleep around with women uh, you are drug free and all of that and you have a bible in your hand and say you're a preacher so the world says you're a decent man yes and some of you say or the woman the wives you say listen this lady's a decent woman Decent, oh, she's so loving and she's kind. You boast about good moral behavior, but you cannot boast about following the truth, which is Yeshua. You should type that. They boast about good moral behavior, but cannot boast about following the truth, being Yeshua. So they're morally upright, but follow Jesus, which is a lie. You boast about good moral behavior, but you cannot boast about following the truth being Yeshua. So these preachers behave themselves well enough to go to Bible school and seminary, and they behave themselves well enough to be promoted up the ladder, because in your church, you have to go through the ranks. 
So he was usher, then deacon, because they had to choose who would be deacon. Or the pastor he appoints you, the apostle says, you're good enough to be deacon. It means you're good enough to, to wash my car and, and sweep the church and so on. That's what deacon is in your book. And these things, so you're good enough for that purpose. Then they make you, uh, two weeks ago we were dealing with that Quincy, wow. Then they, they, they promote you to being a, a pastor elect or evangelist. And then from evangelist, you have to have another promotion to pastor. Then from pastor, you're promoted too. You don't believe that the gifts are given by Yeshua. Prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, apostle, and the like. No, you don't believe in that. You believe that these gifts from a, 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 a have a rank system. It's under promotion. So you could start as a pastor and, and, and climb maybe up the ladder, or evangelist, and go up the ladder. It doesn't work like that. So you have many people who have good moral behavior. And some of you preachers, why you, people say, well, you're a good person. What makes you a good person? Because you behave yourself? <laughs> Jaleed said, I want to be a pastor, but now I don't even want to become second in charge. <laughs> Never you'll be whatever you always assigned you to be. So you boast about people's good conduct, and you call that Christianity. That's what you call, that's what I define as Christian. When somebody behaves himself nicely, they say, hi, how are you doing? Oh, wow, he's a man of God. She's a good woman of God because she, she told me good morning every day. You people are out of your mind. Something's wrong with you. And then you say, you know the Bible? I repeat to your destruction, some of you, if you do not believe in the, the Lord Yeshua, you are wicked. Are you afraid to type that? Everyone who does not believe in Yeshua is wicked. Please put everyone in all caps, all capital letters. Everyone who does not believe in Yeshua is wicked. I told you last week it includes your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your aunt, your children. Kurt said, yes, there's a manual called the church manual that you have to follow. Everyone who does not believe in Yeshua is wicked, including those who believe in Jesus. So all of the pastors who preach about Jesus is wicked. All. They are wicked. They are all wicked. Now when you sit in your house today watching me and you're thinking that he's calling my son or daughter wicked, you're wicked because you don't want to believe the truth. Your child must be exempted from the truth. Please type this as well. Because when you type things, it's, it's, by your words you justify them, by your words you condemn. So some of you type it, and you're going to live the reality of it. Everyone, because some of you fall in this category, everyone who believes in Yeshua, but defends those who believe in Jesus is wicked. Everyone who believes in Yeshua, but defends those who believe in Jesus is wicked. And you're worse. Because I know some of you. You serve Yeshua by intellect, not truth. Ah, Ketsia won the race of that one. She typed first. Everyone who believes in Yeshua but defends those who believe in Jesus is wicked. You could never tell me that you're of the truth, but you defend liars. So that includes your friends, your close friends who you grew up with in Jesus' church, but you just can't let them go. You are wicked because you're defending them based on relationship, not truth. There's a writing in, rec in Scripture about those who have been set apart for condemnation. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4 states that Yahweh has made everything for himself, even the wicked for the day of condemnation. He has made the wicked. The Jesus crew tells you, no, God loves everybody, but yet he made wicked people to destroy them. But you preach that God loves everybody for God is love and, and God doesn't destroy people. So all these, 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 these anti-men and lesbians, you saying, no, he wouldn't destroy them because he loves everybody. And they're free to, they, 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 they have a right to, to, to be loved by us regardless of their behavior. Scripture never said that, but you say it. Because you have a different salvation. 
We do not say that because our salvation is different from yours. We say that Yahweh is angry at the wicked every day. You say, no, he's not. Do you know many of you have walked away because you discovered a relationship that was going to be challenged when I told you you were not supposed to be defending wicked people? You couldn't take it anymore, you just had to leave? Do you know how many of you left because Christmas meant too much to you? So they had a certain crew who, was, who would always disappear at Christmas time. And then you return by February because they have to let it, let it ease off, thinking I'll stop preaching my Christmas then. So you come back in February, uh, according to Pope Gregory's calendar, and you, you're back in the faith again. Because you just had to have a Christmas moment. Then come the, uh, Mother's Day, you'll disappear. Easter, you'll disappear again. Then when it comes to uh, Mother's Day, you're mad because you didn't have a Mother's Day service. So you're upset. He said, those who've been meant for this condemnation have wormed their way in. Ungodly people who pervert Yahweh's grace into license for debauchery, which is lascivious behavior, nasty, wicked, evil behavior that they could defend by preaching. And his own or only master and Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Richard McDonald said he's a Jesus person, which means he just owns Yeshua. Because you cannot tell me that you, you could call him what you want. If ever your sieve is open to being called whatever you want, it is not Yeshua you're talking about. Since you already know this, look at this. He said you already know people's behavior and all that you're supposed to do regarding them. My purpose is only to remind you that Yahweh, now we're getting deep into the text today, who once delivered people from Egypt. Oh, this is big. Yahweh who once delivered people from Egypt, look at this, later destroyed those who did not believe or trust. Oh, this is good. You know that there's a destruction, he said to his brethren he was writing. But he said, listen. <laughs> wow, sister not. He said, verse 5, since you already know this, you know all of this, my purpose is only to remind you that Yahweh, who once delivered people from Egypt. If you have a complete Jewish Bible, you see Adonai. Adonai is not a name. Adonai means sir. You have to learn Hebrew before you want to read Hebrew language. Adonai is sir. That's all it is, not a name. But the, David Stern decided he's going to uh, m m retain our Hebrew culture, or Jewish culture, I should say, which is they don't like to write the name of the father of, of Yahweh. Yahweh never told me I shouldn't write his name. So wherever I, whenever I'm reading Bibles and I see the, 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 the error, I will correct it. That's what truth does. So Yahweh who once delivered people from Egypt later destroyed those who did not trust. There was a group of people who were in Egypt. And Yahweh said to Moshe, I've heard the cry of my people. And I'm sending you to free them. Sounds like deliverance to me. He said, Moshe, go free these people. Moshe went, all of you Sabbath school and Bible school, uh, uh, Sunday school people know, know it. Moshe went to Egypt and there's the, 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 the parting of the Red Sea event and all the rest of it. And the Israel were able to walk over on dry ground. The Egyptians were destroyed. The same people who were above 21 years old, 21 and above, Yahweh destroyed in the wilderness. The same ones whom he said, I've heard the cry of my people. I'm here to deliver them from Egypt. He took them out of Egypt. And the scripture says, he destroyed those, destroyed those he didn't trust. Who? Let me ask if, if, he, if he spent good time in, in, in Sunday school class. And Sabbath school class. Who did Yahweh bring out of Egypt? 
Just type the answer for me, please. Let me see if we get it right first today. Who did Yahweh bring out of Egypt? Now, type, type the answer. Now, th why do I do this? Because I want some of you to see when you read things how, how serious it is. When you look at it at a deeper, a deeper uh, perspective. Melanie is asking, should she use the, the word Yahweh? Not as the name of, Yah of, of the Father. I don't I know. Not as a name of Yahweh. You can use it out of respect. But you don't tell people that Yahweh's name is Adonai. It's not. His name is Yahweh. Good. Yisrael Prophetessioner wrote. Good. Who did Yahweh bring out of Egypt? You typed it? <laughs> I'm seeing the answers up already. One so far. Good. The children of Yisrael. So you've typed that. The children of Israel. Saints, hear me and hear me carefully. I'll ask you a second question before I go into this, this part. Were these people called Yahweh's people? Did he tell Moshe to free my people? So it's Israel. Israel is Yahweh's chosen nation. By covenant. Yahweh has covenant with one nation alone. And it's called Israel. No other. No other. There is no other nation that will be saved but Israel. Hence, only those who are grafted into Israel are saved. So look at this. Look at this. Pay attention. Yahweh brought Israel, not Canaan, not uh, the Amalekites or the Amorites or these idol worshipping demons. No. Yahweh brought the children of Israel, who they said, My father is Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Yahweh brought them out of Egypt. And the scripture, Yehuda, is only one chapter. Verse number 5 states, He later destroyed his own people who didn't trust. Can, can you wrap your mind around what I'm saying to you here? I'm not talking about a Gentile heathen, heathenous nation. I'm speaking to Israel here. Brought out of Egypt, yet Yahweh destroyed those who did not believe in him. Who complained all the time and told Moshe, you brought us out here to kill us. Why did you do this? You should have left us in Egypt. Why you had to bring us to this wilderness to suffer? Yahweh said to them after a while, exactly what you say I'll do to you, I will do it. Of course, the prophets use that as a means to say that if whatever you tell God to do, you'll do. I, these men are a special class of crazy. When Yahweh told you, it's because of your complaining. What if you keep saying, "I'm going to kill you," then I'll kill you. Now, now I can see some of y'all are sending emojis here. <laughs> emojis on the screen. Can you imagine that if Yahweh could do that to Israel, what He would do to you, Jesus clowns who want to tell Him, "I know you said that your son is Yeshua, and that doesn't even give him for salvation, but I choose to call him something else." Do you understand how much destruction you're playing with? Do you understand how much trouble you're playing with when you could tell the one who destroyed his own people that you could give me an instruction to believe on somebody I believe something else and then tell you that you have to accept what I believe in. He destroyed his own people. Which may make me make you, bring you now to reality for some of you who watch me right here in secret. Yahweh has brought you out of the club. To destroy you in the church. That's exactly what he did to some of y'all. You can't wrap your mind around it. You no longer drink, smoke, womanize. You don't have 15 men like you used to have before. So you now become a decent church girl. Believe in Jesus and he'll kill you right there. He brought you out of the bondage of drugs. And make you testify. Jesus saved you from, from, from cocaine addiction. And he'll kill you in the same Jesus church. 
because you don't believe. The destruction comes to those who do not believe. Please type that. Destruction comes to those who do not believe. If you do not trust Yahweh, you are bound for destruction. If you're in Jesus' church, wherever you are, you are bound for destruction. Watch this. Your behavior may change, but your end is still the same, which is destruction. You can have a different behavior, and people call you Christian, but you're still bound for destruction. Another person can be having issues with doing wrong, with sin or whatever it is, but they're saying, Yahweh, I believe you, I trust you, and I know you deliver me, and he said, I'll deliver you. Because you're my child, you don't like sin. While the other one says, I don't commit any sin, I'm decent, I'm a holy woman of God. And Yahweh said, I'll kill you because you believe that you could call my son what you want. If you do not trust everything Yahweh tells you, the minute you tell Yahweh, listen, your word says that I'm supposed to turn away from, that's 2 Timothy 3 now, turn away from those who stiff neck, stubborn, contentious, hard-headed, don't like to hear the truth, like to fight against authority, disrespect authority, and think that they could get away with it. Yahweh said, I'll destroy you. And he said in his word, from such turn away, meaning don't deal with them. You say, no, they're my friends, I can still deal with them. Yahweh said, oh, since you want to prove to me that you cannot trust my instruction, I'll destroy you. Question from Denise. Is expressing your frustration during the trials the same as what they did? No, it's not. They complained, Denise. They, in essence, they said they prefer to be in Egypt. Take me back to where I was. I'd rather go there. And some of you in Jesus Church are no different because what you do is you say you leave the club, but you bring the club to church. So you bring all the lights and everything into the church building. You have your fog machine because there's no glory there for y'all. There's no Shekinah. So you bring a fog machine, plug it into the wall, and then the mist goes up, and you have the same club effect. You bring the lights down dark. I know some of you preachers even have parties in the church. And you say it's now a holy party. Dancing to the same music from the world. Just ensure it doesn't have any cussing in it. Because you are out of Egypt, but you have the same wicked behavior inside of you. You're just in a different environment. Hence, the Egyptians said in Egypt, in the wilderness, what did they say two or three weeks ago? Hey, this God, you brought us out of Egypt. That's what they said. And then Aaron said, tomorrow is a fast unto Yahweh. Imagine this creature. Could be so disrespectful to tell Yahweh, listen, this God right here, we'll, we'll, we'll have a feast unto you. With this God before us. You brought the club to the church. You have the same emotional high. And call it the anointing. Anybody who can sing well enough to entertain you, call them anointed. Same beat. You now have your Afro beat because you want to ensure that you have, you keep the youths involved. So what do you do? You bring them the beats that are produced by demons and devils and say, dance to this. We just give you some words about Jesus and God and whatever you bounce and be good to go. Do you know many of you are, 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 are unsaved gospel singers? How oxymoronic. You sing gospel and you're as lost as, 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 as ever. Just get the club dressing. You dress as if you're going to the club and go to church. Because Yahweh has taken you out of bad behavior for you to believe that you're in good shape. What, why he did it? Because I have to go deep with some of y'all. He did that because he knew that there was a generation he had to preserve in the wilderness. So he said, listen, I will save Israel by name, not you. So what did he do? He brought them out of Egypt, made them reproduce, get you and then kill him. And so I say, I'll take your children to the promised land, not you. I hope you get that. He had in their loins those whom he wanted to save. So what did he do? He took the parents out of Egypt 
made their parents produce offspring and then kill the parents and say, die out here. Some of you were taken out of the club, out of drug addiction, out of all these evil behaviors so that you can produce offspring in an environment where Yahweh yeah, can say, good, now I have offspring from you, I'll kill you. And your children, there's another generation who will rise and say that my father followed a false god and full of foolishness. I'm not doing that. There is a generation who will arise out of y'all and, tell, and happening, it's happening right now. There's a younger generation y'all mid saying, hey, listen, pastor, um, this man, Apostle Nigel Honor, is telling us the Messiah is Yeshua. We checked, because you can't fool this generation right here. We went online and we researched and found it to be true. But you said, it's Jesus. And these creatures will tell these young people, yeah, 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 you can call them what you want. And you think that'll work for them? There is a generation that will arise out of your midst and change the name and the culture of your environment. And you, you will dead and you'll be dead anyway. You will be dead and gone. Some of them will rise up and turn against your standard of doctrine and Christian, what we call some of them in God's name. Standard of Christian doctrine and practice. Gone. They'll burn it. Because they realize that you preach to them a gospel of unrighteousness. Which is not about fornication and adultery. It's about saying you can call the, the son whatever you want. That is the epitome of unrighteousness. Yahweh brought his people out of Egypt and killed them. And you believe that you are some, you're exempted from it? If you do what they did, which is not have belief in what he said, if Yahweh says that he's going to free you, you better believe it now. If Yahweh says he's delivered you, you better believe he delivered. The, listen to me. I'm going, I get, about to get mad at some of y'all today. Listen to me, saints. If Yahweh says that you are saved, you better behave as if you are and believe that you are. Don't sit here saying, I don't believe it. I'm, 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 I think I'm a lost person. You are insulting the declaration of your father who is sovereign. If he looks at you and says, you are righteous, but you look at yourself and say, I don't think I'm righteous, you are insulting Yahweh's sovereignty. You play with some serious trouble. Don't play with this. You had better trust what he says. He said, I have known you before the foundation of the world. You better believe it now. And he said, I've called you holy. But you call yourself a sinner because you did something wrong yesterday. So you want to disqualify yourself as an earthling. When sovereignty says, when divinity said, you are my child. You say, I don't think I'm Yahweh's child. What's Pastor Rob saying? One told me once, as a Christian, he think, that the church should promote all, an all-white party. Lord have mercy. Oh my goodness me. You remember New South Town Week in Linden? They'll have it soon. COVID, COVID stopped that an awful y'all this year, last year. You remember when, when they used to tell you that um, Sunday night was a church night for Town Week? So you have the, the, the heathens down the road and they used to take by courts. And that's their section to dance in the street. And I know you little sis, you used to slip over to the, to the devil's side. Just check out things and come back. You used to sneak down to see a devil man. Because you in the Jesus section, but your man in the devil section. So you go pop and see him and come back to Jesus section. Because you could flow in and out of, of, of the circle. Saints, when Yahweh calls you something, do not distrust what he has said. Yahweh calls you peculiar. Which is different. Which means you're weird. In reference to how the world sees you. But you're doing your best to not be peculiar. You don't want to appear to be so off. So your confession is, I'm saved. You know, I'm not a Christian like that. I'm not like as, as extreme as Nigel. I'm, 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 I'm saved, but I'm not to that extent. He said that you're different. How you got Christmas tree in your house are you different? How 
how do you celebrate Valentine's? When Valentine's Day comes, you have to find a white bottom and a, and a red top. Or vice versa. You have, to be, you have to look the part because it's a day of love. You are different, saints. You are called to be different. Apostle Thomas, it came to you, the all white party too for the church. My goodness. Dr. Yates is asking a question. There are 7,000 plus languages spoken in the world. Why only English says Jesus? <laughs> Thank you, sir. English is about the craziest language there is in the world. It's an incomplete language, by the way. We still have words like megabytes being a coin only recently and so on. And terabytes, never existed before. Gigabytes, never existed before. So it's a, it's a developing language. Yahweh has called you to be different. You're supposed to stand out. You're supposed to be one who shines effortlessly. Not whereby people love you, but where the world would hate you. So whenever a person is speaking evil about you, be happy because I told you, Rosh Hashanah, that you will shine effortlessly. They look at you and despise you. Who she thinks she is? Why he always has to be like that? Why must she always behave this way? Because I'm different. That's what you're called to be. You are never called to, st to sit into a mold by the world could love you. When you have a weaker party, they send for your preacher to pray for to open the party. Come pastor, you pray to open town. We can he has enough to get up and pray. We pray God that you'll bless town. We, are you people out of your mind? Brother Ron, good to see you. Bless this week. You know what happens in town. You know that they'll, they'll be all black. Black. Blackness to the, to the highest degree. Black behavior, black clothes. Nasty behavior. Dark behavior. You know that. But you stand there to pray that God will, and you pass and stand there because they give you Sunday morning as, 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 as your time. You feel so important that you are called to pray so that the devil's agenda can be accomplished. You feel that important because you're just like the world. You are the world's pastor. We are called different. And you were chosen to be different before the world was formed, saints. Before the world was formed, which means before you even arrive on the scene, you were chosen to be different. Also to be blameless. Yet you confess from your mouth, I can't be perfect. When Yahweh said you're supposed to be blameless, there's a difference. Perfection means maturity. You can be mature. But it's called you to be flawless. Flawless. He's coming for a church without spot. Then he say persecution standing, yes, you shine when persecuted. That's when you shine the best. Some of you saw the onslaught that came in our brother Apostle Lambert. I am a happy camper. They didn't do enough. You're supposed to attack us savagely. And then we preach in your face. That's how you can handle me. The worse you talk about me, the more I preach about you, that you're evil. You get mad when I call you evil. Because you, you know it's your reality. When you call me a madman, the Antichrist, uh, unkind, th those things don't bother me. But the moment I say that you're wicked, you blow a fuse. Because your condemnation is, is, is ringing in your head. You know that that's what you are. Hey! Even Apostle Thomas sang a town week in 2013. <laughs> Yahweh has freed you. <laughs> Apostle Thomas sang for town week in 2013. What a difference. And I'm happy about that. When you can have a record to prove that Yahweh has freed you from something, that's called salvation. You were chosen in Yeshua the Messiah before the world was formed. Chosen to be blameless. Whatever Yahweh has pro proclaimed about you, be that. Believe that. Abide by that. And let me just at this woman issue a warning to you all saints. 
whenever you see accusations leveled against your brother or your sister, leave it alone. You don't seek to verify accusations against a saint. And you hear what I'm telling you? Whenever accusations are leveled against your leaders, leave it alone. Do not seek to verify accusations because it speaks to your doubt in the person's character. I don't go to my daughters, tell them I heard somebody say to you, you this. Is it true? Or my son's son, I heard somebody say that you're a thief. Are you a thief? That's disrespect for my, my son. I'm six sons in faith as well. I don't do that to y'all. So don't do, don't, do not do it to anybody who serves with me. I do not do it. It is disrespectful to you for me to come to ask you if you did something that, that the world talk about you. First of all, the world cannot report you to me. I have told my wife, and she's hearing me as I speak right now, I will never go to my wife to ask her, do, do, do you have another man? Are you mad? That is disrespectful to her. I cannot bring myself to ask such a question. I, have n I cannot even risk in my, my head going to ask my father or one of my brothers in the faith, brother, the people said you did this. Is it true? Why would I do that? First of all, the record, the record, the record says you must have two or three witnesses. Not here, say is. Two or three. Any charge you bring against the leader of the church, it must be two or three witnesses before it's even considered a charge. That's written in the Bible. First Timothy 5. Read it for yourself. First Timothy chapter 1, I think it is, yes. There must be two or three witnesses because that's the law. And I was taken from the law. So there will be a spotlight on you that includes accusations leveled against you. That's shining effortlessly too. They are those who will go and dig up everything they can find from your past and put it before you. That's shining effortlessly too because once they do that, you need to start rejoicing. I get happy when people talk to me about how many women I've had. You don't understand why I rejoice because it speaks to deliverance. He used to have. She was a bad girl. What is she now? She had plenty men. What does she have now? Salvation. You still stuck on stupid. I don't care what you say about my past. It doesn't bother me. I don't tell people that's my past. So many preachers get upset. Why you have to talk about my past? Talk about it. Because that's where you're stuck. You could only speak where you are, which is in my past. Even if one of my former women come on this broadcast. Now don't get smart. But you come here, you want to start typing now. Ah, Nigel was my man. So what? Was. Not am. I need to help some of you, my sons, deal with these people who think they're crazy. You come my parents and talk about he was my man and he broke my heart. Good. I'll tell you, tell you the type why I broke your heart. Why were you not qualified to be Mrs. London? Since you won't get smart on my page. What disqualified you? What made you miss the mark of having such a handsome hunk of flesh before you? <laughs> I just love teasing my daughters in this house, boy. <laughs> you don't bo stop with people bothering your head and getting you all upset because they talk about your past. So what? You are a free person. You've been delivered. Walk in righteousness. That's the sister lady ordered. The past is history, man. Quit getting worried over that. You get mad and text somebody. Why you have to talk about me? So what? Even if it's one of your old men and he said he had you, had. Shop clothes. You ain't getting any more. Had. 
Why you have to text him and go back into his life again? Why you must step up with me? So what, 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 what must he talk about? Had. It is finished. Because Yahweh has called you righteous. Hallelujah. Your father in heaven has said, regardless of what you did, somehow you need to understand that. Whom he foreknew, the same he predestined. Whom he predestined, he called. Whom he called, he had to justify. It's written in the book. Justify means that he has rendered you faultless. Meaning everything you did in the past is, for, is forgotten and forgiven. Believe that. You are faultless. Sisters, because I know this new culture in the church among young people now in the, in the world, where they have videos of you all, you go to sleep with some man, he takes a video of you. Even if you're one of those people I told you before, you are faultless now if you say it. Don't hold your head down as if you can't walk the road. Because I see this culture popping up in Linden too, where you men feel you are free to make sex videos of the girls. In the first place, it's always in my head that any man who makes a sex video of a woman to publish it on Facebook, you have a man yourself. You're a full-blown hen. No normal man would do something like that. And what do you always go for? Some, some young girl. Because it shows me that you already have a, 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 a low self-esteem when it comes to sexuality. You must be some small business owner. My daughter got that. <laughs> See, I'll find some little girl to make you feel like some man. Go find a big woman. Find a grown woman and think, see she'll call you a man. You sick perverts. <laughs> Why must you be sharing little girl's photograph and, of, of, of being naked? What, what does that make you? you? There should be a death penalty for some of y'all in Indian. You sick creatures. But young lady, even if he did that to you, I'm saying to you that you, if Yahweh has saved you, that is your past. You are free from it. You are delivered. Walk in freedom. <laughs> Pass message Twinkie. <laughs> Whatever that is. Exactly, uh, uh, but a lot of punks. Gotta share some girl for the guy because she left you. You some crazy cat. You are free indeed. Stop being uncomfortable. Even in the face of those who you sinned with, do not be ashamed of your salvation. You are a new creature. Your father called you new. Don't hold on to what is past because there's a salvation that you have that's different. And the scripture records that Yahweh destroyed his people, but he hasn't destroyed you. He chose you for salvation. Today I close with this and we pick up again next week, Yahweh willing. But I rejoice in the God of my salvation, for he has justified our sins. Whatever the Father said about you, if you doubt it, it is called distrust and he'll destroy you for it. Yahweh does not tolerate distrust. He doesn't tolerate it. Your Father in heaven, our Father, Yahweh, proclaims over us that we are justified, meaning that we are faultless. You have no guilt. If you do not believe that today, you are insulting him because you're telling him that what he says about you is not enough. And you're actually putting yourself in your mind above his declarations, which is the interesting thing to do. Regina wants to... De de <laughs> Regina, don't please don't ask Auntie Mel to define anything for you on this broadcast but Twinkie. No. <laughs> don't define Pastor Mel. <laughs> but they, they have to be that in order to, to get all these little girls alone and no, no grown woman. A grown woman is mature, Reg. She's sexually mature. He wants a little girl who's not mature because he's a Twinkie holder. <laughs> that has to be only only reason.
That's it, Corey. You're not ashamed of your past. Live a life in which you are free based on your father's declaration. Even important to note, as I leave you today, is that, speaking from my perspective, and I know my brothers are the same, from my perspective, there is no saint on this broadcast, rebroadcast, watching on YouTube or anywhere, who can honestly tell you that I have ever encountered them doing wrong and condemned them for it. Never. Never. There's no saint who can tell you they've confessed anything to me the day that was wrong. And I said, Emily, you see that? Look what you're going to do. How could you do that? You're not a save. You're not save. You, you evil. Never. Never. Because the nature of your father must be in your leader, who's an apostle. And Yahweh has proclaimed you to be justified. I will not call you condemned. I'll speak of my expectation of you, but never that your, your end is destruction. Never. Brother Javon said, I always rejoice that Jesus couldn't keep me from sinning. As soon as I was brought in the light, I became disgusted. Wow, with what I used to do. Same here. And I praise Yahweh for you. That's a sign that you're saved. Saints, walk in freedom. I do not condemn you. I have never instructed any leader in co Mercy International to condemn you. Apostle Thomas is not one given to that nature. Apostle Joshua doesn't do it. Apostle Lambert doesn't do it. You, Apostle Stephen Branham, uh, my father, Bishop Errol London, none of us has that nature about us whereby when you tell us something that you did was wrong, as bad as it is, we don't go announcing it to the church. We don't have a special message to preach about it. We do not remind you of it in reference to every conversation unless there's a reason to tell you you're heading down this dangerous path here. Now watch it. Because we bear the nature of our Father in heaven. You therefore have no right to condemn yourself if we don't condemn you. Walk in freedom. I bid you all shalom. And I thank you so much for viewing this broadcast today. I rejoice in Yahweh your fa our Father. Remember saints. Remember that Yahweh has chosen you and he's given you faith is given to you and if he give you faith it means he give you the ability to trust what he says do that shalom blessings and I love you all bye bye